I'm love. And I know it's innately who we all are. When we're born, and all the beautiful little babies in this world that are born, before the world gets a hold of them and starts programming them into cultures, family traditions, religions, TV shows, iPads, news feeds, all of those things that our brain gets formulated around and how we show up is when a baby's born, they're pure love. So that's innately who we all are. And this journey for 365 Give has taught me innately I still am that. Mm -hmm. And when we begin a practice of giving and other mindful practices that connect us back to that, we begin to realize we're, we're just enough. We don't have to do anything, anything. I didn't have to do 365 Give. We don't have to be a world-renowned writer. We don't have to be a famous person in Hollywood. We're just enough as we are. Mm -hmm. And when we begin to understand that, life gets easier because you just keep going back to who you know your true human nature is. And that's, it's all good. Hello, my name is Asha. My name means hope. Our special guest in this first international edition of the podcast of hope is Jacqueline Way. Jacqueline Way is from Vancouver, Canada, and she is the founder of the organization 365 Give that she started with her son when he was only three years old. Jacqueline is an international happiness speaker, and I hope you will enjoy to listen to her practice of giving. Voor onze trouwe Nederlandse luisteraars, de internationale edities worden op YouTube vertoond met een ondertiteling zodat je niks hoeft te missen. Podcast of Hope Moving Towards Happiness. Hello and welcome, Jacqueline. Jacqueline Way in our podcast of Hope. Jacqueline, I'm so happy to be here with you and talk about uh, hope and happiness in this podcast. Um, I have a few questions that I'm going to ask you, and I'm so curious to learn from you today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here oh, all the way from Canada. It's all an way from honor Canada. To, to be on the podcast Absolutely. with you today. Thank you. Thank you. And the honor is all mine. Um, let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about happiness. Let's talk about happiness. Happiness. Tell me, how, how important is happiness in your daily life? Hmm. Well, you know, I am a mom of three small little boys. Uh, and what I know is that in my house, I'm the chief happiness officer. <laughs> and I know that when I focus on my own happiness, that I truly care how I'm showing up each and every day, that I practice my happiness, I know how to create it for myself, that this gives me the opportunity to affect everyone around me. And that starts right in my own family, how I'm showing my children what happiness is, how we can create it for ourselves in our day-to-day -day lives, and we can exchange it with each other. And then I get to take that out to the greater world around me. So when I'm happy, I know that I'm changing lives because my happiness will spread. And we know this through the science mm -hmm. of happiness, that it will spread to everyone I touch throughout the day. Yeah. So it becomes the gift of not only am I focusing on my own personal happiness and well-being, but then I'm touching everyone around me. Yeah, that's what you're doing. What so do. tell me a little bit more about you being a mom. Three mm. kids, mm. tell me. Absolutely. Well, first of all, you know, one of the ways that I started 365 Give, and we're going to delve into that a little bit more, is for the for the singular reason that my son was born. I am an adoptive mother of three beautiful little boys in Vancouver, Canada. I feel so blessed they came into my life. And I literally say my son Nick was born to inspire 365 Give. So the experience of being a parent gives you that opportunity in a single moment of time to experience unconditional love. And I think most parents that are listening to this understand that feeling that you do anything for your child. You mm. throw yourself in front of a train. And what I learned from my children is that it doesn't matter what culture you come from. It doesn't matter the religious background my children came from. It didn't matter any of that. The moment I met all three of my children, I got to experience unconditional love between another human being. And that changed the way that I look at the world. It changed the perspective that I had. 
And it gave me an opportunity to say, I have this moment of time in my life and in my children's lives. How can I teach them to be kind, compassionate, loving little people and take that out to the world? Mm -hmm. How can their happiness also affect others? So that when my life is done, I know that's been passed on. You know, that's a legacy I can give them and significance that I can create in this world just through my children. Wow. And Nick was was your inspiration to start he was 365 my oldest Give. Was. Tell yes. me, tell me what like what is 365 Give? So 365 Give, I've been in the world of philanthropy for mm. most of my adult life, uh, working through my own businesses. But when Nick was born and I looked out into the world, I thought, you know, how can I really make some significant change? with him because what we know about our children is that they learn uh, and become a lot of who they are before the age of seven. Mm -hmm. That's when their brain programming really starts. They're looking at their parents. They're looking at the people that affect them around them. That's where they're uptaking and learning at their most. They're mm -hmm. learning to walk and talk and feed themselves and so many significant um, things in their life. But we don't take a lot of time to focus on, well, how do I already cultivate on my ch child before they go to school? How do I cultivate kindness? How do I cultivate love? How do I cultivate mm -hmm. happiness? How do, them, how do I help them connect with others, both in their community mm -hmm. and just in the world around them? Before they go to school. So how, how Before old, they go to school. How old was Nick? Like <laughs> so 365 Give started as a personal parenting project. Mm -hmm. Nick was three years old. We literally wow. started on his third birthday mm -hmm. um, because he was going to be going to preschool. And so I know I, I knew I needed to make that influence on him before he started that time. So every day for 365 days, starting on his third birthday, we did one thing to give back to the world every day. Mm -hmm. It had to be so simple. A three-year-old could do it. It had to be close to home, things we could do right in our own neighborhood, literally in my own backyard, which we did. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had to be simple and easy. It wasn't about money and how much I had. I, we weren't a family that had millions of dollars to give away. So it was just the things that we could find and things I could find Nick could be passionate about and he could participate in mm -hmm. at the same time. Could you give an example? Like Absolutely. You know what? I find this is the easiest way for everyone to engage, whether you're a family or you're, you're a school, a teacher, is create a list. And that's what we do. I still have the first list um, that we created where we mm -hmm. sat down and went, what are the things that where can we get engaged right where we are? And so it wasn't just about giving back or being kind to people, which a lot of kindness projects are about. It's how do we interact and give back to people, but how do we also do it to the planet and to animals? Because especially mm -hmm. for children, we know that connection to animals is huge. They feel that mm -hmm. unconditional love if you have a pet at home. Mm -hmm. um, and we know not everybody is you know, the extrovert that interacting with people, um, maybe volunteering a lot of hours, that's not always comfortable for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to look at this from every angle and how I could engage Nick right where he was. Well, what we know is that when we go to the park, we could pick up garbage along the way. We know that we could bake cookies for the fire department down the street. We had an animal rescue um, organization down the road from us. We had blankets and towels we could donate. So we started just taking a look around what's right in our world and how could we start making that list every day. And so every week we'd sit down and what were our ideas? What could we do? We didn't do something different every single day. If we were walking to the beach, when we went to the beach, we picked up garbage. Well, that might have been two or three days a week, right? Yeah. And when it was garbage day, we sorted all of our recycling. Nick learned to recycle garbage. Once every two, week, we, two weeks, we go to the bottle depot and return all of our bottles and cans worth money. And we save that money for a whole year until we raised enough money that at the end of 365 days of giving, we helped put a roof on a school in Africa. Yeah. Right. Wow. So these are the things that we just incorporated. Mm -hmm. We would donate items that we no longer needed to the Sally Ann. At the same time, we would buy items we did. When we went to the grocery store, we would buy something that was organic or fair trade, something that we knew would be making an impact in that moment that we were right there. Yes. We always bring our bags, yeah. you know, to the grocery store. Yeah. So this was our habit that we just incorporated into our daily mm -hmm. lives. So we didn't. We got to a point where we didn't even have to think about it every every day. We st we stopped making a list because we went, oh, here's our daily give, and here's our three sixty five give, and no, we're at the store with our bags. That's our three sixty five give today. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, mommy's gonna buy a coffee for the person behind me in line as we're going for a muffin and coffee at yes. our local coffee yeah, shop. Beautiful. So it became very easy to yeah. integrate. And and how did it impact your life and mm. the life of your son? Well, it definitely changed my life in so many ways. We're gonna get into a little bit more. I think what I see now and when I look back, Nick just turned 16. 
Mm. And what I see now and what I have heard for his lifetime, whether it's play dates at other people's schools, it's reports from his teachers, it's the programs he participates in, is Nick is just a kind, compassionate, loving little human being. It's mm. innately who he was because we cultivated it at such a young age. Mm. He had it in him. Science and research tells us mm. that we innately have giving and kindness in the bedrock of who we are, in the mm. DNA of who we are. But because we cultivated it at such a young age, that's how he just shows up in the world. It's yeah. just who he is. And Adama, it, it actually is who we all are. And we'll talk about mm. the science of that shortly. Oh, beautiful, really beautiful. So during the first 365 days, mm -hmm. was there a day that you really didn't feel like, oh, yes, let's do this, let's <gasps> give? Or maybe that the little boy, I can imagine that he's three years old, right? Yeah. That he said, no, I don't want to do this today. I want to play with my cars or I want to play with my, my friends. Or how, how did you manage to do it every day? That's a, that's a fine question. And some days, you know, it was a struggle. When, when I started this, we actually, cre I created a blog around it. And we, that's why it's called 365 Give, because I needed a name. We wanted to share our stories with our friends and family um, so they could see that what we were doing. My hope was if we inspired just one other person to give back as well, then that's how we started to create this ripple. And so not only were we giving every day, but I wrote every day as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on the days that felt tough, were the days I had to step, I had to get out of my own way. I had to make that intention and that commitment because I knew that if I didn't keep that up, I was showing my son that I wasn't following through with my own commitment. I was mm. showing myself I wasn't following through with the commitment. The people that had started reading and following us, you know, this was a commitment that if I didn't stand in that, then everyone around us would also not think it was possible. Yes. And that was the hope, and it's what I love about the name of this podcast, mm. is that we gave people hope of what's actually possible. Yes. And so on those tough days, that's what I went to. Mm. I went to, if I don't hold that, then everyone around me won't hold that. I won't be able to do it for my kid. And they're watching all the time, mm -hmm. right? When we don't think our kids are watching, they're watching. Mm -hmm. So even on a day it was, uh, I don't feel, he never said I didn't feel like doing it because it was, we incorporated it. I would do something that was easier. We would, you know, make art out of um, things from out in the environment, right? Mm -hmm. And that was my way of teaching my kid how to give back that instead of going to the store and buying art supplies, we had everything we needed right where we were. We mm -hmm. could recycle and upuse. And so you just had to get creative. I had to be very creative some days, even on the days I didn't and you are feel creative. like doing it. <laughs> I know you are creative. Um, how did it, like, what did the environment, the friends, your family, what mm -hmm. were they saying when you start to blog about 365 give. Yeah, that's in it's interesting. You know, when I told my friends and family I was going to do this crazy project mm -hmm. and give back every day, I would say they all had a good chuckle. For the same reason most people do. They're like, you're going to give every day for 365 days. Yeah. Like, you have fun with that. Let me know how it goes. So, you know, I got a little pushback. Everybody thought I was a little crazy, but I had a ton of support as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a sister who helped me set up the blog. And on the days where I got really stuck or if I couldn't write, she'd hop in and she'd do it for me. I had friends that were always there cheering us along. And on, you know, just on the days where you thought nobody was reading, special comments would come up on Twitter and Facebook. I mean, Instagram didn't even wasn't alive on mm. those days or TikTok, but you would get a little message you know I still remember getting a message from a teacher in Australia saying oh can you look at our blog we're doing this in the classroom now oh wow and all of a sudden you would be <gasps> you'd be in such awe and shock that you didn't even know these things were possible or you hadn't even thought of them yet and some beautiful little angel or a little piece of magic like you being here with me today you know would keep me going Mm -hmm. And that's when you get to look around the world and see innately the beauty um, of people. And they always kept me going. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So, but there are always people who are more skeptical, mm -hmm. critical. Oh, we all know them, them, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you deal with those mm. people? You know, I think that our critics in our life are our greatest teachers. Because mm -hmm. usually when a critic comes into your life, it's the critic that you are to yourself. And a great example oh, of this. Oh, repeat this. This is really important. <laughs> this is really important. Yes. And I'll, I'll give an example to go along with this. So when the critics come into your life, 
and it could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could be just a comment from Instagram, whatever mm -hmm. your handles are. Those critics are actually, you're looking in a mirror and look and see what you're saying to yourself. And this is the example that I'll give is I've always said I'm not a writer. I'm not a writer. I wrote a blog for 365 days every day and kept telling myself I wasn't a writer, mm -hmm. right? Over mm -hmm. and over. And then I had a few people around me that would go, oh, you made a spelling error. Oh, the grammar's not perfect. Oh, and so it would keep coming up mm -hmm. because I kept saying I wasn't a writer. All of those critics, you know, that were happy to tell me how bad my writing was, yes. they kept showing up mm -hmm. until I changed that self-talk, until I said, all good, you can be my critic, you know. I stopped saying those words to myself. Mm. And when I stopped telling myself I wasn't a writer, those critics disappeared because wow. I was no longer looking for validation from the outside mm. world. I got it from myself. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So what are you saying to yourself now? Mm. Who, who is Jacqueline? Mm. It's simple for me now. And I said this to you recently, I'm love. Mm. And I know it's innately who we all are. When we're born, and all the beautiful little babies in this world that are born, before the world gets a hold of them and starts programming them into cultures, family traditions, religions, TV shows, iPads, news feeds, mm -hmm. all of those things that our brain gets formulated around and how we show up is when a baby's born, they're pure love. So that's innately who we all are. And this journey for 365 Give has taught me innately, I still am that. Mm -hmm. And when we begin a practice of giving and other mindful practices that connect us back to that, we begin to realize we're, we're just enough. We don't have to do anything, anything. I didn't have to do 365 Give. We don't have to be a world-renowned writer. We don't have to be a famous person in Hollywood. We're just enough as we are. Mm -hmm. And when we begin to understand that, life gets easier because you just keep going back to who you know your true human nature is. And yeah. that's, it's all good. Beautiful, beautiful. I love the way you're saying praxis, mm. the praxis of giving. Um, the practice of giving, but also it comes from the wisdom of giving and the science of giving. Could you share a little bit more about the science or the wisdom? Yeah, Let, let's do both because it connects both into cultural history, it mm -hmm. connects into religions, and then it connects into our biology. And I think the biology piece is a big piece everybody's missing. And this is why I talk about happiness a lot as well. Mm -hmm. We like to call giving as your daily dose of happiness. And that dose stands, that's an acronym that mm -hmm. stands for dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and your endorphins. Well, these are beautiful chemical and hormonal reactions that go on in our brains and bodies. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the neat thing. Everybody is born with this. It doesn't matter your religion, your culture, which border you were born on. We are all born with all of these chemical reactions that fire and wire in our body. Mm -hmm. Well, the really unique part about giving, no matter how small it is, is when you give this chemical reaction, all fires and wires at the same time. So dopamine is our reward system. So when you give, and this is when you give with no expectation of anything in return. I'm not giving how, you how a do coffee. you do this? Right. How do you do this? Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when I'm giving unconditional you giving. unconditional giving. How do we do this? Right. So I'm buying you a coffee in line behind me. Mm -hmm. That has to be with the thought that nobody's going to buy my coffee today, and you're not going to show up in the coffee shop next week and buy me a coffee. I'm just doing this because that's how I want to show up in the world. I want to show up as kindness. I want to show up as love. I want to show up as happiness for another human being for the sole purpose of making their day a little brighter. Mm -hmm. That's all, right? It's my ability that I have to do that by buying you a coffee. I have this ability to change your world in this little moment of time, mm -hmm. which then is going to ripple out to everyone that you touch that day yes. as well. So that's unconditional giving. The minute you think there should be some kind of exchange, even you saying thank you, mm -hmm. if I expect you to say thank you for me buying you a coffee, mm -hmm. I've put a condition on that giving. So mm -hmm. we have to release all that we expect and we know expectations can be hard to let go of mm -hmm. when we give. And when we do that, the dopamine turns on. Here's the expectation you can have. I'm going to feel better. Mm -hmm. So the dopamine turns on. That's our reward system. I buy you a coffee. <gasps> 
I feel better. That's the reward. It's like crossing a finish line. There's mm. the reward that you automatically get for crossing the finish line. Nobody else tell you you did a good job. You just know that you cross that finish line and you go, yes, yes. right. Then oxytocin. Well, let's go back to talking about love. I wasn't just talking woo-woo when I was talking about love. Mm -hmm. Oxytocin turns on. That's what people call it. It's your hugging hormone. When a child is born, oxytocin floods your body. Um, you know, when we see friends for the first time in person yes. as we did today, and you get to have a hug for the first time, mm -hmm. or your first kiss, you know, yeah. with a new love in your life, oxytocin floods your body. So when I mm -hmm. say I'm love because of my giving practice, I am, because it's a chemical reaction that's happening mm -hmm. now. Serotonin, let's go back to happiness. That's our body's happiness transmitter. That's where happiness comes from. And all of a sudden, you've got a smile on your face. You feel like you've just done something so good for the day, you know, and you, you, it's all coming in. And the last one is in our endorphins. I happen to be a runner. So if anyone has ever heard of the runner's high, mm -hmm. that's the runner's high, where you feel like you can just keep going. You've been given that little boost of energy. Mm -hmm. So that's the part that amazes me, is that we talk about you know, giving as, you know, people always think, well, that's just the right thing to do. It's the good thing to do. No, it's the good thing to do for ourselves. Yes. It's actually a selfish act when you look at the research and science, mm -hmm. when you're going out and giving with no expectation in return, all of a sudden you feel better. Your mental health is better. Your well-being is increased. You're happier. And here's the kicker. Something called, called cortisol in our body drops. Drops. Many people think and that's that, a stress hormone, that's right? That's our stress yes. hormone. Yeah. Many people think that stress is just something we're feeling or experiencing. Mm -hmm. It's actually a chemical that's running through your body. Mm -hmm. So when you give, cortisol drops and you're now stress is starting to drop. And here's the good news. You are healthier for that because what we know about cortisol and stress is it causes disease in our body because mm -hmm. we are at dis-ease with who we are and how we're showing up. We've got too much stress running through our body. So these are all the magical things that happen. Wow. Yes. And then we look at religions and cultures, and it's the wisdom that runs through. Mm -hmm. Every religion has some form of regular giving practice yes. to community, to each other, to the church. And then we look back through indigenous um, uh, traditions as well. Mm -hmm. And it is the same, that practice of giving that goes to Mama Gaia, the beautiful exchange you have between the planet um, and yourself and, and the rituals that have been created between the indigenous traditions in our world and the earth. Yes. And that's giving. And that's giving. Runs through it all. I love it how you, you talk about giving, but also how you embody this, right? It's mm -hmm. not like I'm doing something It's on the topic of giving. No, you, when I see you, when I talk with you, it's always like you embody the topic. You mm -hmm. master it. Uh, you're practicing it every day and Yeah, you can, you. people, <laughs> I, I hope they can feel it. If you are watching this, I really hope mm. that you can feel this. Ben, and I'll let you know, it didn't start that way. It took me that time. I mm. needed that year of practice. So if you do yoga or you meditate, mm -hmm. you know that in three days, you don't, you feel a little better. But over time, when you've incorporated it into your life, you know that when you go without it, you just don't feel as good. Mm -hmm. And giving is that practice, you know, that I know people can incorporate into their life. You don't have to sit and meditate for an hour and try and clear your mind. This is the practice that This causes is, the yeah. same effect. So what if I want to start mm -hmm. giving? Yes. Where do I start? Right. Um, well, first of all, you start with 365 Give. Come on over to our website because mm -hmm. we have programs for literally everyone. You know, mm -hmm. we have a program for families, for individuals, um, for schools and classroom, and even, even youth leaders. I think what people need is they need, first of all, some inspiration. So we teach, we, we teach, first of all, as we're talking about today, we teach the science of giving. We want people to understand yes. the benefits because until we're well, we're in good mental health, it's hard for us to give back on a regular mm -hmm. basis. So that's the understanding we create. We teach that. We'll teach you how to do it, but most importantly, we'll inspire you. And then we turn it into empowering you because depending on where you live in the world will depend on how you're going to give, mm -hmm. depending on who your family is, your cultural rituals, um, potentially your religious rituals. You're going to incorporate that into your own life. So we're going to help you and empower you to do what's right for you where you are in the world. Um, but really for me, it's start a list. Do it mm -hmm. the same way Nick and I did it because it mm -hmm. was that simple. It became a daily habit like brushing your teeth, but you have to set the intention every day. 
right? Try it for 30 days. Start there. If you don't want to make the commitment for 365, do 30. We could all do 30 days mm -hmm. and see how you feel at the end of it. And, and really tap into it. How are you feeling every time? Set the intention, do the practice, check in. This is, this is emotional intelligence. Let's check in. How am I feeling? How do I feel at the end of the week? Mm -hmm. You can do a little journal about it. You don't have to write a blog. Use your social media. Like this is what we've seen so many people do. They do a give, they post it on social media. So not only now are you affecting yourself, but you're affecting everybody around you for 30 days. Yes. A little quick post. That's yes. all you have to do. And now you're doing the exact same thing that Nick and I did. You mm -hmm. know, and you're making a difference. You're making it count. And you're making yourself accountable. Yeah. And that's how any practice starts. And, and people need to know that there's this fallacy about um, how to kind of incorporate a practice into your life. People think mm -hmm. it's 21 days. It's actually not. The average is 66 days to actually get a practice into your life that you keep is it takes at least 66 days. Because you have to reprogram your brain, mm -hmm. how you're viewing the world, how you're showing up, and, and program it as you would a computer to repeat and repeat and repeat. Mm -hmm. So on average, at least 66 days. Some people more, some people a little bit less until you just, all of a sudden you're actually, your brain's now looking out into the world going, oh, what am I going to do today? Mm -hmm. How am I going to give today? Yes. And, and how do we do this? Like, for example, I can start, right? Just like you did. Mm -hmm. uh, I can teach my children. Yes. Uh, how do we bring this, or are you bringing this to schools, to organizations? Mm -hmm. And what is the response? Like, mm -hmm. how, how does it impact schools and organizations? What's happening Absolutely. Well, you know, first of all, I feel, I mean, I'm, I'm here in Amsterdam yes. for exactly this reason, right? Mm -hmm. How can we keep spreading this message and, and, and bring that sense of it's possible to create change mm -hmm. um, in your own lives? Uh, you know, in our, for us, we literally started with three schools um, when we created our school program. Now we have over 600 globally that have participated in our programs and continue to participate in our programs because what people see, and especially educators, when we talk about our school program, is the kids are so engaged. Okay, so this primary it's, school. This is, oh. and high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's both. We see it across all platforms. Um, and the kids get creative. It ties into, and teachers can easily incorporate it into environmental learning. They can teach it into global citizenship learning. Mm -hmm. They can teach it into, so, or coordinate into social emotional learning so that they're checking their boxes as they need to, mm -hmm. to hit their curriculum goals. But what they see in their kids is that daily dose of happiness. You're mm -hmm. seeing kids who never participated in anything at school. Well, all of a sudden they can because mm -hmm. everybody can do this. There's no barriers based on your learning ability. You can bring your ideas to the table. You can help incorporate them. Mm -hmm. Everybody's hands and hearts can go to work. Yeah. Um, and there's no barriers based on learning. And I'll let everybody know, I have three children that are neurodiverse children. Mm -hmm. They learn differently in school. So when my kids get to participate at th in 365 Given School, they don't need supported assistance. They don't need somebody helping them. They can do it right where they are. Yes. And they can do it in a way that works for them. Mm -hmm. And that's the most exciting part that I think educators see is they see this little lights go on in, inside of all of their students. Yes. They're excited to come to school. They can't wait to, you know, to do their giving for the day mm -hmm. and implement their own ideas because yeah. we empower them. Yeah. You know, it's not just a, here's a calendar, take it home. This is homework. Mm -hmm. It's not the way our program works. We mm -hmm. don't do calendars that they have to go do as homework. Mm -hmm. It's how do we bring out of them what they want to do because mm -hmm. now they're excited to get going. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I'm sure it will also impact their uh, their students or their study uh, results, right? It does because when a brain has is happier, yeah. when a child is more regulated, they're happier from their brain and through their body, mm -hmm. they're learning better. Their yeah. brains are functioning better. Mm -hmm. You know, we teach a, a whole happiness class as well for elementary students. Mm -hmm. So they begin to learn the importance of having a happier brain. They're, they're calmer in school. They have more clarity. The, the prefrontal cortex of their brain is working better. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, science tells us, oh, they can do school more easily. They're not stuck in anxiety and, mm -hmm. and fear of not doing well, yes. right? Their bodies are more relaxed and less stress. Less stress, yes. And in organizations? Same How thing. It, it works same exactly. Thing? It works exactly the same way. When you bring it into a, a business as well, you, you make bring it, it into so your easy. Like. It is. <laughs> you know, when people understand the science, if you have an organization of 500 people, mm -hmm. right, of grown adults mm -hmm. in your organization, and you begin to understand the importance of your employees being less stressed 
being more engaged in work, being more engaged with their community and each other, because what we know about social connection between mm -hmm. people, not business connection, but social connection yes. between people, is that then allows, and it literally tells us CSR programs, which are corporate social responsibility programs, can raise a company's bottom line by up to 14% because mm -hmm. people are working at their best now. They feel connected to each other. They feel connected to the community around them. Their well-being increases. Their stress decreases. They feel like they have purpose and meaning in their life. And these are all the pillars of well-being. And mm -hmm. what we know about the world right now is that stress and depression and anxiety that's our world's pandemic right now. Mm -hmm. And people are being frozen in trauma as we have seen mm. once again in our world over the past month. Yes, And people are frozen in trauma and it gets repeated and repeated and repeated. And we need to help and support everybody with that trauma so that they feel like they're working towards peace. Yes. They're working towards something greater than themselves so that we can stop this cycle of violence and trauma that is being created mm. in our world. Yes. So 365 give is already impacting globally, right? Yes. Yes. So where do you see this in, let's say, five years from mm. now? That's a good question. You know, every time I, I think I have a big dream for 365 Give, I get beautifully surprised and it grows more and it expands more. And so, you know, right now we've just created a brand new website, which is so exciting for us. We're looking at doing more live interactive programming and, and working with schools uh, more at a global scale and doing things like we're here doing today where we get to get out, talk to more people, interact with more people um, and grow our community. And that's really what it comes to. If I can touch one life every day and inspire one more person to give, I know I've done my job for the day. Wow. Yeah. You already said about happiness and why it is so important. Can you dive a little deeper on that topic? Because we all say um, happiness is important. It's mm -hmm. important that uh, people are going to prioritize their happiness better and so on. And you you said you talked about depression and uh, stress, anxiety and so on. Um, what is it that you see? What if we are not doing this? What What will... What will be the scenario? What do you think? Well, you know, I think a lot of people will say, you know, happiness is, it's a, it's a fleeting moment of time, mm -hmm. right? We all know that we can get happiness in lots of different ways. We can mm -hmm. get happiness by going down to the mall and buying a new pair of shoes. And we'll have a moment of happiness when we put those new shoes on and we walk down the street for a moment. But a week later, you're not getting that same mm -hmm. emotional hit. Mm -hmm. I think that when we start finding the meaningful, purposeful ways to create happiness in our lives that aren't from outside stimulation. So for example, flipping through TikTok mm -hmm. or Instagram, you may some have some fleeting moments of happiness, you know, um, second by second, but it's how do we learn how to create happiness at a more connected level, mm -hmm. right? So spending time with friends, being out in nature, giving, you know, these are the social connections that have meaning and purpose. So it's not just how mm -hmm. do I be happy in this moment of time, mm -hmm. but how do I actually now expand that from a state of happiness, right? Or a moment of happiness to more of a state of being. And to me, that state of being is, is joy. Happiness comes and goes. It's going to come and go for all of us. Mm -hmm. But when we start these practices and rituals in our life, we can start to create this underlining vibration of joy that runs through our days every day. Mm -hmm. Joy isn't something that just comes and goes and fluctuates with our hormones. Mm -hmm. um, joy is a, a choice we make um, and a way of being that we create in our own lives. So happiness is important. And when we practice happiness and we have, I was um, saying to even a friend of mine today, find your own practices, mm -hmm. incorporate giving. But if music makes you happy, when you wake up in the morning, Turn some music on. Yes. Start dancing. I know you mm -hmm. love dancing. Start your dancing. Then go out for a 10 minute walk in nature, wherever mm -hmm. that is for you, um, so that you can start, you know, having exchange with our planet. Mm -hmm. Go out and do your give right from the beginning. And now you're cultivating and you know how to create happiness in your own life. Mm -hmm. So when those bad days come and it could be depression, it could be anxiety, it could just be too much stress, it could be too busyness, you're now going, I don't like feeling like that. You know how to create the happiness and you start going, yeah, the rest doesn't feel so good. I want to go back to the happiness. I'm going to make space for happiness in my life because when you're happy in your own life, and I'm going to go right back to the beginning of the talk, 
is we're now affecting everyone around us, mm -hmm. right? You're creating a happier family. You've got happier relationships in your life. Um, you, when you go to work, that spreads to everybody at work mm -hmm. too. If you're posting on social media, you're making different choices, mm -hmm. right? So we have that ability that we may affect 30,000 people in our lifetime. I've been blessed with millions. Did mm -hmm. I ever think I was going to affect millions in my life? Of course not. Yeah. But I get to. But, yeah. but when I show up, I have to make sure that my happiness is a priority first because I've had lots of years where I never made it as a mom. I never made my happiness my priority. Mm -hmm. I made everybody else's happiness my priority. Mm -hmm. So I teached my kid, taught my kids that happiness came from the outside. Well, mom had to make me happy, mm -hmm. right? That's not the best lesson for me to teach my kids. The best lesson for me to teach my kids is they see me happy. Yes. They feel me happy. And then they go, oh, well, I want to feel like that too, yes. right? So what, what happened? Because some, maybe something happened that made you click like that. Mm. So, you know, I think when we, these days, you know, we're talking a lot about mindfulness, mm -hmm. awareness. That's been something that has surrounded my life for years now. So during COVID, when everybody was, a lot of people were going through a lot of tough times. Mm -hmm. Literally in the first three days of lockdown and COVID for me, I saw myself already starting to like go down a drain. I was watching too much news. I was struggling with being an at-home parent teaching my kids school. They were yes. struggling. Everybody started struggling, yes, right? Absolutely. And I literally sat and made a choice and I went, this isn't what I choose. This doesn't feel good. I just made a choice and I went, what do I have to do? What do I need to learn? What do I need to cultivate for myself and then for my family? And so we actually made happiness boxes. That was one of our COVID projects where we all got to decorate a box. And in that box, we would find our own practices that made us happy. So the kids where we lived, they were allowed to go bike riding. So we would go bike riding, right? We'd get them out of nature. We'd go to the forest. We would go to the beach. We had things we could do, not with other people, but we could do that I knew. And they then began to know, oh, that makes me happy. That makes me happy. And we started filling our boxes, our happiness boxes. Um, with ways that new made us happy. So now for me, when I don't feel so good, I know innately I need to just turn in another direction mm -hmm. and I need to go away because for me, happiness just feels better. But I had to make a very conscious choice that that was what was right for me and we all have to do that. Yes. It's not just going to show up. If not, we're going to be going looking out here mm -hmm. for happiness every day. Where is it? Where can I find it? And it's not going out there to look for it. It's how do I create it? Yes. And it's coming from the inside, inside. out. It's coming yes. through us. Yeah. Like this to everybody around us, literally. Mm -hmm. It's coming all the way in and then out to everybody around yeah. us. I have this question because I really love everything you're saying and I can relate to this. Mm -hmm. But I also know that sometimes people feel really um, depressed. Yes. They are really not in a good place. Yes. When we show up and say, it's coming from inside, you have to create it, you have to practice, na na na. They feel even more frustrated. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want to say to those people? Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm, I'm not a neuroscientist, I'm mm -hmm. not a psychologist, and don't claim to be in any of those. I always say, first and foremost, make sure you're, you're looking into professional help first, especially when it comes to depression, because sometimes it's not just about you're sad about the life that you're living in. And obviously there's a lot of places in this world you could be right now where depression uh, could be everyday life um, without any doubt. So that's always to me is how can you get professional help next? Um, but we do have access to take a look at our life around us and we have access to information. We have access to support systems, to family we all have to make a choice and when you're stuck in depression um it's it's so hard to climb out but we all have to take i'm gonna go by your name you know and asha means hope and this podcast is named that is that when we take one step just one step every day mm -hmm. towards something different you're not going to go from depression to happy mm -hmm. in one small act of giving you're just not mm -hmm. but when you take one step you've taken one step into hope So could you every day take one step? And that might be, could I listen to a podca podcast called Hope XL, right? Yes. And, and find a little piece of information that I could grab onto that I heard and go, okay, I could take that step. 
okay, mm -hmm. maybe I don't give today, but maybe I could go be out in nature. Maybe I could just go for a walk today where the air, I could breathe in the air and breathe out the air. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could learn something new today that will give me a different lens in which to look at my depression. Maybe that's my step today. Maybe I will reach out to a friend and see if they, I can have some time with them because social connection is one of those steps. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's a, it's a step. It's not a leap. You can't go one from depression to happy. Time. It's one little percent, right? How can you take one step or 1% every day to start moving towards it? Yes. Yeah, and we have, to, we have to be set up. This is why we practice it. Even mm -hmm. on my good days, when I'm really happy, like today, I still have a practice that I do in the morning mm -hmm. because we have, to, we have to be ready. When we're ready and we're always in that practice, then when the hard things come, and I have lots of hard things that come up in my life. I don't want anybody to think that I'm just happy and joyful every single day. I have lots of things that come into my life that um, can feel really tough some days. And some weeks where I feel like I'm spiraling, but now I'm aware of it. And now I know what I have to do to get myself out of it and stop the spin and stop the spiral. So I'm getting my, I feel like I almost say it, I'm, I'm getting to be ready for the tough days. Yes. So every time I practice now on my good days, I'm ready for the tough it's days. It's preparation, right? It's preparation yes, for the yes. days that are hard. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Well, um, what final thoughts or message mm. would you like to leave for our listeners? First of all, I want to thank you for having me. This is um, such a a gift to be having this exchange with mm. you. Um, this is the magic that we get to see in the world. And I think if I can leave a message with anyone today is sometimes just change your perspective a little bit. You know, we get stuck in a lens in which we see the world. And sometimes that lens can be quite dark. And what we teach the kids, and I literally get them, these blue heart-shaped glasses just to try putting on a different lens some days. And maybe your lens needs to be rose colored and mm. maybe it just needs to be orange or maybe it's gray instead of black. But we all have the ability that when we're looking out at darkness, uh, and some days I do this, I shake my head, and I know I can look this way instead and I can see something different. So I make a choice every day when I get up that I, I wanna see love in the world because I know how good that feels. Mm. So before I even lift my head off the pillow, that's the intention I make. How do I start the day seeing love? How do I start the day with the words that come out of my mouth come from a place of love? And how do I then take this beautiful form that I've been given and go out and act on that? Because that at least then I know I've taken three steps in my day to be what I claim to be. And that's my true nature. It's who I am. And I believe that's love. So I encourage everybody to find that in yourself mm -hmm. because you can go looking for it from the outside all you want, but innately we have to find it here first. Absolutely. Well, I see it, I feel it, I hear it. Thank you. It's like all around you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, my sister. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Um, you know, we say this in our classrooms and I say namaste because when we see the light in another person, they see it in us and it's a beautiful exchange. So yes. namaste to you and namaste for everyone that namaste. has joined us and watched. Thank you. De wereld waarin we leven biedt nog geen gelijke kansen. Voldoende eten en drinken. Een adequate opleiding. Goede gezondheidszorg. Vrede en geluk is niet voor iedereen weggelegd. Maar stap voor stap wordt het beter. En zijn we op weg naar een octopische samenleving waarin iedereen zijn of haar leven als goed kan beschouwen. Het is een lange reis, maar we zijn op weg. Podcast of Hope. Moving towards happiness.